the first time in six decades GPs across England have voted in favour of industrial action. The measures which will begin on Thursday could include a cap on the number of daily appointments. Well, last year we went behind the scenes with GP Dr Anita Raja. She'll be debating the action with us shortly. But first, let's see what a typical day on the front line of a GP surgery looks like for the doctors, nurses and support staff. I started work at, what, 8.30? And guess what? I've already seen 18 patients. And the BMS suggests that we should not be seeing more than 25 patients a day. Hello. Is this painful? Not really. I mean, the good news is this looks like bursitis and it's nothing to worry about. I've managed 32 patients still going on, a bit tired. I've managed 40 patients and I've stopped counting after that. I dealt with it as it came because that's part of the job. I'm home now, but not quite, because I've been asked to log on for a couple of hours and help out at the urgent treatment centre. My husband will have to put the kids to bed, but this isn't unusual. So, should GPs be stopped from taking industrial action? Joining us now is NHS GP Anita Raja, who says, without industrial action, the government won't listen. And former Conservative government adviser Charlie Rowley, who thinks they shouldn't be allowed to strike and that whatever issues GPs are facing, industrial action is not the answer. Um, Dr Anita Raja, we saw you there. There'll be a lot of people at home right, only about 30% think they're getting good service, who look at what GPs earn, for instance, close to 70,000 to 105,000, and think, frankly, you know, how dare you? The army can't strike and you make a lot of money. Well, uh, we dare to do this because, um, unfortunately, we're employees. We're not crown servants and we've got uh, employment rights. So even despite the draconian trade union uh, uh, laws, we actually have some rights that we can exercise. And it's not about GP pay. So it's very, very important that we understand what this strike is for. Mm -hmm. um, it is for the basic core GP contract, which is shrinking. So from 11%, we've gone down to 6% in the past couple of years against inflation. How's that going to work? You're asking us to race a car with zero fuel. We're unable to pay our bills. We're unable to pay our staff. We're unable to employ more doctors, more nurses. The government keeps coming up with new schemes which are not fit for mm. purpose. We're seeing 6.4 million more registered patients in the past 10 years. Yep. And we're seeing more patients seen by one GP. So one full, fully qualified GP sees around an average of 2,300 patients. Yeah. It's unsustainable. Okay, but the worry is, though, that patients are going to be hit by this, right. that the number of patients you'll be able to see will be cut. And actually, it's hard enough for people to get appointments as it is now, and that could really affect their health if they can't get an appointment. I'm really pleased you're saying this, but where were we when 2,000 GPs shut down permanently in the past 14 years? Were pa was patient care not compromised? Patient care is being breached every single day when they have to wait three weeks before they can actually see a GP. Patients are being put at risk on a daily basis. We need to understand that GP partnerships are no longer lucrative. GP pr practices cannot pay their bills, they can't pay their right. staff, okay. mm. and this is affecting patient care. Let's pick up with Charlie yeah. there. You know, this is all about making improvements for patients. Yeah, absolutely. Look, the biggest risk to a patient is not being able to see a GP. Um, and you're only going to exacerbate the problem if you have GPs that are taking industrial action. And if you are increasing the backlog of patients that need to see the GP, uh, then you're putting that patient at risk. And look, I do think we, there are so many pressures within the health service. We know that those pressures have to be alleviated. That's why you need to bring in more pharmacists. That's why there are, uh, there's the brilliant 111 service. More money can go into the health service, as it always does. But ultimately, if you are a patient in this country, uh, just if you are a police officer that protects your community, if you're in the armed services that protects our country, who are not able to strike, okay. if you're a patient that needs to see a GP, you should absolutely well, be entitled to do looking so. Looking at what Dr uh, Anita Raja has to say, listening to it, and looking at her, uh, and her job, right? Um, your view is, frankly, there should be a law against GP striking. Just to explain to us why. Do you say, what's your view of those doctors? Do you think they're disgraceful? They're absolutely not. No, no, everybody loves the NHS. Everybody wants to see their GP. We want to have a family uh, you know, GP. We want to get back to those days where you can get an appointment. But taking industrial action, taking strike action, 
everybody can see is only going to exacerbate the problem. The backlog is only going to grow. That means that more people across this country, people who know that uh, they've got a family member, a relative, a friend that needs that urgent appointment, that needs to see that frontline uh, 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 form of defence in the health system, that is to see your GP, you should absolutely have a right to do so. Going on strike, capping the number of patients as the, this industrial action will take, uh, will only make the but problem the worse. The how, you know, how do you get change to happen unless you do something like this? Well, as I say, you can bring in more pharmacies, uh, use the pharmaceutical sector, you can, uh, you've got the brilliant 111 service. There are things that government needs to talk to uh, the medical profession about to make sure that those pressures are alleviated. But that doesn't take away the central argument and the fact that if you have industrial action in GP practices, that is only going to make the problem worse for patients. I, I beg to disagree with you. First of all, being a GP myself, we're extremely well, intellectual, well, we're well, extremely is, is, sensible. Is it it's taken us 60 years to take industrial action, which speaks for itself. We weren't the first ones to jump on it. We are advocating patient care, patient safety, where every single patient in this country deserves quality care. Absolutely. How many times Absolutely. have you? How many times have you seen a patient say, "Well, the GP dismissed me. The GP didn't listen to me. The GP can no longer listen to you." If you are seeing 60 patients today, we're seeing three times more patients than we but should be seeing. We are delivering 20% more appointments since 2019 with lesser staff. We're unable to recruit I, more GPs. We're unable... Uh, please absolutely. don't tell me the about side, this. I'm We're... on the side of the GP and the patient here because there are about 7.2 million appointments that were missed in 2019. That also adds to the backlog. I want to make sure that people right. that do have a GP appointment... Well, I'm going to stop you there because we ask the public, frankly, whether you... GPs should be allowed uh, to, to strike. And uh, the results are in. Uh, 20, excuse me, 69% said uh, yes. And 31% and of you said... So just said, to be clear, that's if GPs you, should be stopped from taking industrial action. So right. the majority saying that GPs should be stopped. Thank you both very much for joining us this morning.